Hey, it's Raleigh from Kamui, and I am your average pool player. This is a video series where I take shots that professionals do on the first try in major tournaments, and I see how many tries it takes me to complete them, and also what I learn along the way, and I try to reason out what I'm doing wrong. Over the years, professional pool has seen the rise and fall of some legendary players. Mike Siegel, Johnny Archer, Corey Duell, the list goes on. But whether their reign was for a year or a decade, nobody could seem to stay on top. The exception, of course, is Efren Reyes. Ever since he came to the United States in 1984 and used the fake name Cesar Morales to secretly carve through the top dogs in America, he has been winning games with outlandish shots and unparalleled creativity. 70 international titles and 34 years later, an official Efren Reyes farewell tour was thrown for him, and somewhere along the way he was left with this shot to win one of the matches. The ball is just hanging over the corner pockets, so it should be an easy finish except for Efren Reyes has a little thing called style. You ever heard of it? So he calls this pocket and even describes a sort of backy forthy thing to the crowd, but they just laugh and wonder what this dude must be thinking. Turns out it was this. Yeah, yeah, I full table three rail reverse bank shot that looks borderline impossible for anyone who's not him. So he drains the 10 ball, the crowd goes wild, and somehow the guy who always makes the crazy shot surprises everybody by making the crazy shot. Let's do it. On attempt one, I wanted to get a baseline reading by just knocking the piss out of the 10 ball to see what would happen. And hitting the 10 ball off the table and scratching the cue ball in the opposite pocket means we are not off to a great start here in the Astrodome, folks. Attempt number two is a little closer, and while it didn't travel back down to this side of the table, it also didn't head further up the table after it hit the right rail, so that's something. Attempt three is slightly better, and also reassuring that I'm vaguely in the right ballpark and I just need to get scientific about it. Now if you've watched my other videos in this series, and thank you so much for doing that if you have, you may notice that this shot bears a distinct, exactly the same sort of resemblance to Jason Shaw's famous reverse triple bank shot. Everins, of course, has a higher degree of difficulty because it's the full table, and the fact that it was a trick shot for the win in his own farewell tour makes it approximately 100,000 times cooler. But the principle is largely the same. The cue ball hits the 10 ball, giving it speed and left spin. Right spin on the cue ball transfers to the 10 ball in a gear-like fashion, putting left spin on the 10 just in time for the 10 to hit the rail. Thanks to whatever Swamp Witch invented slow motion cameras, we know the spin on a speeding ball reverses after it digs into a rail, so now the 10 ball has counterclockwise spin going into the right hand rail, which sends it downward towards this end of the table before hitting the left rail. Now the spin is almost completely gone from two rails of contact, so it just rolls straight down into this pocket. If that sounded complicated to you, it's because it's... I, it's complicated. I eventually made the Jason Shaw shot when I smashed the cue ball with left spin to give the object ball right spin, but I did have some lingering questions about whether the spin was really a necessary ingredient in the soup of that shot. The comment section on that video was a little bit split on how important spin was, but spoiler alert, I think I come up with a pretty good answer to it later in this very video, but not on attempt four. Hang on, let me just completely blow this shot. Yeah, okay, there we go, just had to get that out of my system. Turns out this shot also requires some backspin to pull the cue ball down into the bottom rail and avoid running into the 10 ball as it's trying to get to this rail. Okay, so on attempt five, I'm adding some backspin to keep the cue ball clear, but I'm also adding right spin. Okay, and we can verify that our 10 ball had some kind of counterclockwise spin because after hitting this rail, it travels straight across instead of angling up table like it would have if the ball had no spin. On attempt six, I put a hair more right spin, and although it hits the exact same place on the right rail, overlaying the two shots reveals that attempt six actually did a very slight reverse which is progress. Checking the Efren shot again, he is blasting the cue ball and keeping the rebounding 10 ball from traveling more than about a single diamond up table. So on attempt seven, I try to use even more spin and even more speed and... Okay, in an effort to put more spin on the cue ball, I did a real rook move and kind of swiped across the face of the cue ball and hit the 10 ball on the wrong side. Let's try again, speed plus spin on shot eight, and I double hit the 10 ball and send it off to Michigan. Okay, it seems like having to put such accurate spin on a cue ball traveling the full table at speed 
is really chafing the old biscuits, and I couldn't help but wonder again, exactly how important is it to add right spin to the cue ball? Could just crushing the cue ball be enough? So I decided to try just hitting it hard with backspin to avoid the double contact, but no right spin on attempt nine, and ring a ding ding, my friends, that is much closer than my other shots. Now I'm pretty much the strongest person alive right now, don't fact check that, so I can definitely hit a little harder without losing all my accuracy. Shot 10, I used lots of mustard, but no right spin, and whammo zammo, new catchphrase. Wait, I already hate it, but who cares, because that is in, baby. All right, 10 attempts to hit the Efren 3 rail reverse bank, and this one actually looks pretty similar to the original. But how could the 10 ball be getting the necessary left spin to get back down the table? I guess we'll never know. Psych, I did figure it out, but only by going all the way to the top. That's right, I called in the doctor himself, Dr. Dave, mechanical engineering professor and billiards guru. And the answer is, a glancing blow from a cue ball, even if it's not spinning, imparts spin onto the ball it's hitting. In this slow motion footage that's got way too much text all over it, you can see how a ball hit on the left side picks up a little bit of left spin, even if the ball that hit it isn't spinning at all. Now it's not much, but it seems to be enough to give that 10 ball the all important left spin without having to load up the cue ball with right spin to transfer it. Now right spin on the cue ball can certainly make this shot easier, but it appears that you can skin this particular cat without any right spin at all. Thank you to Dr. Dave for the footage and the assistance. Go check him out on YouTube if you're in the mood to learn. And if you think something else might be going on here, please let me know, Efren for president. That's it. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to Society Billiards for letting me film in their wonderful pool hall. If you have any comments or critiques or criticisms or you want me to try a shot, go ahead and uh, leave them below and like and subscribe or whatever. I'm not your parents. Okay, bye-bye.